Well, we're back with you. I'm Marlon Bowling, and we're going to be taking a look at how we're opening up here this morning in our grain and livestock markets as we get about a half hour deep into it here. And we're bringing along a little extra in-house expert uh, help with Chris Swift. How are you doing? Doing fine, morning. Good morning. So uh, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, uh, you and I and Dewey Strickler put on a uh, marketing seminar at mm -hmm. the Opera Land Hotel last Friday. And uh, I've heard numerous comments about that. Uh, what was your takeaway? What were some of the questions that uh, really struck you from the audience? Well, a great group of, group of guys out there. Really, a lot of it was the interest rates, the, the rising interest rates, and some of the uh, lower farm prices that farmers have had to deal with over the last couple of years uh, makes it very difficult when it comes to just now into uh, crop planting season and we're beginning to see some inflation. We've seen fuel prices rise so it has some concerns to the farmer and, and going back to his lender with uh, three kind of poor years in behind him of crop prices but in the uh, talking with uh, Dewey and yourself and, and exploring some of the things it looks like being still in kind of an uptrend right now and as we saw him gap up this morning uh, the world hadn't come to an end yet so. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, it was a very interesting situation, and uh, we had uh, quite a few folks there that mm -hmm. uh, were very active in the conference there put on by uh, Unisouth Genetics, so yes. uh, we appreciated all that. That was very great. Look forward to uh, more of that type of stuff mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our opening prices okay. here again this morning. Uh, let's go right to the big board and take a look here at our corn first, where we are four and a quarter higher on the march. We're at 366 and a quarter. Uh, only one tick off our high of the day here, Chris. We have July now four and a half higher, and December four and a quarter higher at 396 and a half. And now looking at the soybean trade, this is the one where we had a mixed uh, <laughs> bag of information <laughs> overnight on the export sales, and I'll get to that in a second. March soybeans now 19 and a quarter higher. You heard right, 19 and a quarter higher at 10.02 and a quarter. Almost on the high of the day. We are off our low by about eight cents now. Uh, we have July soybeans 18 and a half higher at 10.22. September up 15 and three quarters at 10.16. A lot of uh, bullishness here in the soybean trade today. I was talking about the overnight export sales, and this is where there's a lot of confusion this morning. But apparently the trade is shrugging it off, Chris. China canceled 455,000 tons of soybeans overnight. Now on the surface, that would be very bearish. You would think. Yes. But then we had a sale to unknown destinations, which a lot of times turns out to be China, <laughs> right? Um, 314,000 tons. So maybe part of that is a wash. Maybe that's why the trade's ignoring it. What do you think here? Um, it could very well be. I know that uh, South America didn't have quite the rain in the areas that they wanted it to, and they got some flooding in some other areas. So not as uh, a good a day for the soybean crop down in South America, most likely giving it some of that boost and then negating some of that decline from the uh, canceled export sale with a renewed export export to mm -hmm. someone else. So to someone else, yeah. <laughs> Unknown uh, destination. Yes. Um, also, uh, the it's going to be dry this week, but the rain forecast for next week, I understand, is going to be kind of light. It, it could be. Um, you know, and um, right now, again, they're right at the crucial point where they could use some rain mm -hmm. in that area, and it'll keep, uh, keep the market activity going for a while. I understand Brazil soybean harvest is about 10 percent done. I think that's, that's correct. well behind last year due yes, to the heavy it is. rain. Mm -hmm. All right, just a point of interest. I want to take a look now at what's going on here in our uh, uh, wheat trade. Let's go to Chicago wheat right now. And we have Chicago March wheat nine and a quarter higher at 458 and a quarter, July nine and a quarter higher. Kansas City on the March contract, uh, we are now trading 10 and three quarters higher at 476 and a quarter, July 11 and a quarter higher at 508 and a half. Is there more room to the upside? Uh, quite a bit more there. Really? Quite a bit more, yeah. Um, none of the equities markets decline last week, caused any rain to happen in the Midwest, and right now it is still bone dry, and I saw the next seven days, there's no, no uh, moisture coming in at all for the next seven days. Equities markets, and we'll take a look at that in a little <laughs> bit. I'll, we'll come back to that. All right, now let's go back to the uh, Minneapolis wheat. Right now we have March five and three quarters higher at 6.09 and a quarter, so it's uh, joining in as well. We'll come back in just a moment, and Chris and I will analyze what's going on in our uh, livestock trade. We'll take a look at the equity markets as well when we come back. And we're back with you here with Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated in Nashville. We're taking a look at our markets. And uh, Chris was just alluding to the fact that we had the big rally again in the equity markets. They really uh, stole the spotlight last week for just huge volatility. Let's take a look at where we now are. And we did mention earlier this morning that the Dow was up about 330 points. I understand some of that has evaporated already, but that's 
kind of the normal these days. Here's a look. Now we're up 167 points, quoted at 24,358. I wanted to take a look at that dollar too because it has a lot of impact here on the uh, ag commodities, uh, some analysts will tell you. And we have the March now down 110 points at uh, 90.160, so we'll keep an eye on that one as well. All right, I want to open up our uh, live cattle and uh, feeder cattle markets for discussion here. Let's take a look here at the live cattle board, Chris. We have uh, February 25 higher, and now you have April coming in there 68 higher at 124.30 per hundredweight. We have June up 68. Uh, very similar market action. I will point out that we still have the February up around 126, which, by the way, is close to where the cash market is. Mm -hmm. um, and meanwhile, you have the August at 113, so it's still about a $13 premium on the nearbys. If we look at feeder cattle, let's roll over there. We have March at 146.48. That's up 28 cents. And we have April 25 higher at 148. And if you look at the August, it's 151.30. Now here, it's a $5 premium in the August contract. Mm -hmm. We have the nearbys at a discount. What's going on? Um, well, on the front end of the cash market, that's where, because it's physically delivered on the uh, uh, live cattle, mm -hmm. you still have that ability to make or take delivery. And they, I heard some rumblings of some cash trade at 126 late Friday afternoon after right. the close. Um, we're still looking to trade cattle for the rest of that show list this early this week and maybe even include next week's into it as well. So, so you don't think it'll be a late week uh, cash cattle uh, movement? No, I don't time. think so. I think the Packer needs inventory and uh, similarly to the way it didn't, the equities market fall didn't bring rain into the Midwest, it didn't curb the appetites of uh, consumers either. You so, think they'll be more aggressive then? Um, maybe not necessarily more aggressive, but I don't think they'll curtail anything. Really? I think it's just kind of moving along as natural as can be. So hmm, okay. the equities markets, although they impact a lot of things, generally the day in, day out livelihood of what people do is not impacted directly. How are the weights doing? I'm sorry? How are the weights? Oh, well, the, I think they the were down two pounds, if I'm not bad in mistake. Okay. La last kill week, they were down two pounds week over week. It's been okay. some rough weather out there. Uh, really bitter cold up in the uh, northern tier, and now we just got inundated with rain down here, so it hadn't been a very good good week for the animals. So. Okay, let's take a look at the lean hog trade okay. and go to the big board. And on the lean hog futures right now, boy, it's uh, narrowly mixed. February up a nickel at 73.22. Uh, the April contract down 13 now at 68.72. May down 28 at 74.50 but only a nickel trading range. So hardly any trading taking place in the lean hogs. Is this kind of a balancing act right now? Or um, what's it going could on? be. I, I don't think there's a great deal going on in the hog market right now. I know we still have good demand and still great export demand. Uh, Mexico uh, being our still number one leader that we sell a lot of pork to. But r right now, I think a lot of it is uh, there's much talk in the hog world about new production coming online within right. a year. And I think that's got you know a little bit of weight on prices to keep people from getting too optimistic about it. Interesting stuff. All right. Well, uh, Chris, thanks again for coming in. Absolutely, Mark. Uh, Always a pleasure. the markets here on, uh, on the money as we get things rolling. And uh, we'll take a closer look at things as we move down the road here. But in the meantime, I want to remind everybody we had the uh, pork bellies. Uh, keep an eye on that. We'll show that a little later, down over $11 Friday. Ouch. Okay, so uh, that may have an impact on the futures. Chris uh, Swift is with Swift Trading Incorporated in Nashville. And uh, Christina, with that, I guess I will turn the reins over to you. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate that. Some great insight from Chris Swift once again. Okay.